All right, guys, so we're out here in the shop. Um, we have just done some of the rough shaping on this combustion chamber. Um, these red lines represent the outskirts of the head gasket. Um, this is an 18 to 1 compression ratio, so we're looking for 10 cc's in the head. Um, he's going to be running the Autolite spark plug. Um, he's going to be doing a valve combination of 3224. Um, I have the 32 millimeter intake valve here. Seat has not been installed. Um, the only valve I have of now is the 28. Um, so that's how it would look with the 3228. Um, if you want, I can go ahead and enter the Autolite spark plug in. Um, I usually shape every cylinder head to the spark plug depending upon what spark plug they're running. Every spark plug sits differently in the head that's screwed all the way in. Or is it? No, that is actually way far out. So let's get this screwed in here. All right. So, here we have it with the spark plug screwed in. Um, as you can see, uh, this is not optimum. Um, the chamber shaping has not been completed right now. You can see some of this area is still kind of wonky. Um, was basically just marking it out and doing the rough shaping first. Still need to get the seats put in and then it's going to need its final shaping. But I just wanted to get some video out there of the cylinder head. Um, you know, if you notice, um, I relieved in and behind down in the spark plug basically um, if you notice the spark plug sits in at an angle um, so it tapers up and around um, so the highest port point is back here where the highest point of the spark plug is <clears throat> and over here it slopes around um, to allow for the is you know any type of creation of movement I can add to the cylinder head I'm trying to I have absolutely very limited space at this point trying to maintain this compression ratio um, the one thing that will help the exhaust valve is going to the smaller valve um, by going to the smaller valve the valve would then be less shrouded um, the bigger the valve um, the more shrouded it becomes um, because it just becomes closer to the inside wall of the combustion chamber. Um, you know, an optimum size intake valve for this might be uh, 28, 28.5, 24. Um, that combination um, in this cylinder head um, with this design would probably work. Um, but it's still at an astronomical rate <clears throat> for a combustion ratio. Um, so if in fact I was building this cylinder head and wanted it to remain uh, somewhat normal, um, I would want to remove material, drop the compression ratio back down. Um, in doing this, this would do two things. One, it would allow, uh, in allowing me to remove more material, would allow me to shape these areas better. Um, what you need to kind of factor in is flow rates of, of valves. So if you have, let's just say for instance, a 25 millimeter valve, and the flow rate of a 25 millimeter valve, let's just say is 50 CFM. And then we know the flow rate of a 32 millimeter valve, let's just say it's 75 CFM for nice easy numbers. So you would see why putting a bigger valve would uh, create more power. Um, you know, that CFM flow has a direct relation correlation to horsepower. There is a calculation of CFM times 25 point se, point .25, 0.257 equals horsepower. So if you're gaining CFM, you're gaining horsepower. So you can see why the logical thinking of going from, say, a 25 millimeter valve to a 32 millimeter valve would gain flow. But what you have to take into consideration is um, that valve flow rate is done by, you know, the absolute flow rate of the valve. So a 25 millimeter valve's absolute flow rate is a fictional number, but let's say it's 50. 
that would be in its optimum situation, you know, with zero shrouding around it. Now, if a 25 millimeter valve was put in here, uh, depending upon the distance around the valve, um, you know, there's a set amount um, of distance where the valve is technically unshrouded. Um, this thin sliver of space in here uh, is definitely a shrouded valve. And no matter, you know, that's sitting down and that's probably, let's call that 275 lift. So at 275 lift, that's just breaking the surface of the head. So that's probably 250 inch. That looks like a quarter inch of space under there. At 250 lift, from zero to 250 lift, that valve has zero flow rate from here to about here. So what you need to think about is a 25 millimeter valve might flow 50 CFM, a 32 millimeter valve might flow 75 CFM. But if by putting in the 32 millimeter valve, you are now shrouding 65% of the valve, what's 65% of 75 CFM? That's the question. So if you do that equation and you say, okay, well, you know, let's, let's say this wasn't completely shrouded around here. Let's say 65% of this wasn't shrouded. Let's say if it was just shrouded in this area, you know, like a, like a properly clearanced area would be up here and correctly clearanced down here. The only real area of shrouding um, technically should be um, the outer limits of the cylinder wall or the head gaskets limits. So that's only really from here to here. So now if this was all properly clearanced and you went from a 25 to 32 and you only have now say 18% of the valve uh, shrouded, you know, 18%, so you have 75 CFM minus 18%, you might pick up from 50 to with the 25 millimeter to maybe, you know, 60 CFM. So you would still see a gain in performance. But here's the thing. A bigger valve needs more spring rate. You know, springs are measured in spring rate. And you have, you know, uh, for each, you know, hundredth of an inch, it might take uh, 200 pounds of pressure to compress that spring a hundredth of an inch or one inch. So if you have, you know, say a 500 lift, so a half of 200 will be 100 pounds. So you have 100 pounds of pressure to lift the, the 25 millimeter valve. Now, when you go up to a 32, you're then going to need more spring rate to control that valve at a higher RPM and a bigger valve. So you have a bigger valve, which can flow more now. But when you factor in the percent of increase, you know, if we go from 50 to a 25 unshrouded to 60, which is, you know, the 75 CFM of a 32, but it has 18% of it shrouded. So we're gaining 10 CFM. If you multiply that CFM times 0.257, which equals horsepower, you might come up with, you know, the difference between 50 and 60 is 10 CFM. So, no, so you know, that might be uh, two horsepower per se, per se. Now, by adding the bigger valve, you're gonna have to add more spring. You add more spring, you know, you have to calculate your spring rate, you know, the, the ratio of your rocker to the spring rate, how much your lift is. Uh, multiply that by your ratio of your rocker. Um, you know, divide that by two because every rotation of the engine only is one rotation of the cam. Um, and then if you take RPM, you know, which say it's 10,000, so you would take 360 degrees of rotation divided by your RPM. What I ended up factoring it out to I didn't do the equation for this um, valve, but on another valve was, you know, when it gets extremely shrouded, you might be picking up five or two horsepower, say in this situation, and the one I was calculating, it was something like five horsepower. But it took an additional five foot pounds of torque to move that spring. Now, when you calculate torque times RPM times 5252, the two numbers kind of balance themselves. So long story short is, there's a lot more behind the cylinder head 
than just buying parts that look good and installing them just because. You need to know the math, you need to know the science. Engine building is a true skill. True skill. You would have no clue how much math is involved in building a cylinder head besides me just sitting out here welding and grinding and shaping and you know measuring and reshaping and remeasuring and getting the things where I want them to be. There's a reason everything is where it is in my cylinder heads. This is not designed by me. You know, this design would never be something I would design. Um, so until next time, guys, hope you like the videos. Hope you learned something. My name's Paul. This is Paul's Carts. And until next time, you guys have a good day. Like and subscribe to the videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.